Does your Nexus 6P loop good? Well, today I'll be showing you how to patch your own boot images so you don't have to suffer this horrible thing. So obviously you want to do this on a computer. So this is based off a thread from XCNathan32 and from the help of XLS654, both the XDA members. And this is just a different thread that I made. You can have a look at the original thread linked there. But today I'll be showing you how to patch your own boot images uh, pretty much based off this guide that I kind of wrote. So uh, let's get started. You're gonna have to download a few things obviously. First up is the Android Image Kitchen. Uh, pretty much a few scripts that unpack, repack, and I think that's about it from Osmosis on XDA. So pretty much come over to this link and then just download one of these, whichever, well pretty much you're either on Windows or Linux. So yeah, once you've downloaded that, you'll also want to download the factory image or at least have the boot image that you want to patch. So currently, for example, if you want to patch the one for stock Android on 8.1, then of course you'll need to download the factory image for 8.1. So we'll just go down to Nexus 6P and then download the specific version that you want to patch. And this could be a custom ROM as well. I'll probably show you with a custom ROM as well. And this is what you want to download. So a factory image. And of course at the end I'll show you how to patch Elemental X as an example. Uh, this may not work for future versions and actually a lot of this may not work in the future but this is for at least Oreo 8.1 and above hopefully. So once you got all those downloaded, I've got the three things downloaded here, uh, we can get started pretty much right away. Let's uh, start off by opening up the Android Image Kitchen. Once you open that up, you can just extract everything in this folder or what I like to do is just extract it to another directory. Once you've done that, you'll see this stuff. If I just open that in a new window, you're going to see an unpacking batch file or a sh file and the repacking one and the cleanup and you got your Android tools folder. So I think for those that are using the sh files or I think shell files, I don't think you can drag and drop on those or at least when I tried on Linux I couldn't. So I'll show you two ways of using of course your scripts here. So let's just open up the factory image because we need a boot image to patch. So we're going to open up the factory image and then open up that folder and then go into the image zip file here inside the factory image. Now please don't get confused, you're not patching the boot loader, you are patching the boot image. So just extract the boot image like that and we can close that. And we can also close the factory image. So here is one way of doing it. You can open up a command prompt or terminal window to this location where your scripts are. So on Windows, you can just hold shift and right click and open up a, a command prompt or PowerShell window. On Linux, I think you can just right click and open in terminal or open with terminal. Otherwise, you can just change directories using the CD command and do that. Once you've done this, all you have to do is type in unpack img. As, as soon as you start typing unpack, you can press tab and then that'll, that'll bring up the file that you want. So in this case, the unpack image script, and then what we'll have to do is drag in the boot image after leaving a space afterwards and pressing enter, and that'll run the script to unpack your boot image. Now you can see all this go by, and you're going to see two new folders created, which is the RAM disk and the split underscore image. Now of course, something else that you can do on Windows is you can just drag the boot image on top of the batch file that you want to use, so the unpack image bat, and that'll do the exact same thing as well. And then you just hit any key to continue. Once you've extracted your boot image or unpacked it, you'll need to go into the RAM disk and then go down to fstab.angler. Edit that with a text editor. I'm going to be using Notepad++. And in, this, in these first two lines where it has system and vendor, what uh, you need to do is remove the comma and verify, whoops, Okay, comma and verify string after that. Delete that and do the same for the next line, which is the vendor image. And then you also want to disable forced encryption. So you can actually just remove this whole line. If you change it to encryptable, that means the user has the option to encrypt their data. But I think that will prevent use with TWRP. And it's just better overall if you just remove that and also decrypt your data partition while you're at it. But we're just patching the boot image for now. So once you've done that, you can hit save and we can close that. Next up, you want next thing you want to edit is the init.angular.rc. 
which is just here. We're also going to open that with Notepad++. And what you want to do is scroll down until you see this. It's only on the 83rd line. And basically, you want to change the processes or the cores that it uses. And so the maximum is 3. So 0 to 3 is 4, including 0. So that's, um, that's how many of the CPU cores that we're going to be using. So for this 4 to 7, that's the other half. We're just going to change that to 0 to 3. Of course, you can probably optimize this a little bit better. We'll leave uh, 0 to 2 there. But if you want more performance on background tasks, you can actually let, let them use all four of the cores. So I'll just do that. And then for the top app, it'll use all of them as well. And for the camera, we'll let it use all of it as well. So that's it for this, the init.angular.rc. We'll save that and close that. You also want to delete the verity underscore key down here. Just delete that file. You want to go back one folder and go to the split underscore image folder. And then where you see the boot.image dash command line, you want to right click and edit that with a text editor. And at the very end, these are your command line build arguments. So at the end, you want to type in a space, leave a space, and then type in max CPUs equals four. Uh, just like that on the end there. Save it and then close it. And pretty much you're pretty much ready to repack the image. All you have to do is run the repack image script. So you can double click on it, and that is done. So you can see the new image dot new, sorry dash new img here. Now that is the image you want to flash, and that's it. That is your patched image that uses four cores, and that is how you do it. Now let's have a look at patching the Elemental X kernel installer. Now this one patches your existing boot image, so of course you'll need to do both of these things if you plan on using Elemental X at least. So you're going to need to patch the stock boot image, and you're also going to need to change something in the installer. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Let's open up the Elemental X zip file, and then maybe go into boot, and then probably command line.sh. Now not all kernels may look like this, so you're going to have to use some of your brain power to have a look and try to find out where we can edit these files or these uh, commands here. So obviously we want to scroll down and just add at the end of this of the string here where it says uh, command line equal blah 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 and at the end of this we can just add the max CPUs equals 4 and then save that close that and then what you want to do is go back to the folder um, in the archive and just put it back in. Now on maybe macOS or Linux you may not be able to do this. Um, Linux probably you can, but if not you don't have a graphical user interface to do this. Or you can just extract the entire kernel or custom kernel and then just re-zip it back up maintaining the folder structure. So you can do that as well. Uh, it's a good thing to rename things once you've patched them. So this one you'd rename to like four core patch, for example, if I can rename. Okay, uh, maybe it doesn't want me to rename, but that's fine. But yeah, rename your stuff, make sure you know what your what your files have changed to. So next up, we'll be having a look at a, an example custom ROM. Okay, so I'm just going to use AS, AOS IP 6.3 as an example. Now when you open up the ROM, usually, well, most of them actually supply you with a full boot image that replaces your current one. And when you do this, even though you flash the patch boot image before, it's going to be replaced with the one that comes with the ROM. So of course, you're going to need to patch this as well. Now, you can do this two ways, uh, as in repacking the patched boot image back into the ROM. You can either actually just replace the one that's in the ROM. So of course, like the other one, uh, the Elemental X file, you just drag it back in and replace the patched one outside that you've done with the stock one inside, or you can label this as a separate boot image for this specific ROM and then after flashing the ROM, you flash this boot image separately. Now that is just to maintain the originality of this ROM, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to close this. And we've got the boot image here, right? And what we need to do, of course, is use the Android Image Kitchen to unpack the image and edit some of the files there. You can use the cleanup.bat to remove all the old stuff from there. That will remove your new image, uh, new boot image as well. So what I'm going to do is drag it on the unpack image script, hit enter, and let's have a look at the RAM disk. Usually the custom ROM RAM disks and also, yeah, well, RAM disk, 
has most of the verify stuff removed already and maybe it has optional encryption so we can have a look at this by going to fstab.angler as you can see the first two lines already have the verify thing removed and you can also see in the data line it has it noted as encryptable now you can leave this because this allows you to re-encrypt your device when your phone is booted up it will not do it automatically which is what we need so we don't want boot images to just encrypt your data partition whenever your phone turns on uh, that will kind of mess things up with TWRP or have a more likely chance of doing so so encryptable is okay but alternatively you can actually remove the line uh, the rest of this line if you don't want it to encrypt your phone in any way so that's fine we can leave this as encryptable but if it says forced and then some other letters I think it was like um, file based encryption so you don't want it forced you can have it encryptable or you can have it as nothing so we're done with that and let's also have a look at the init.angular.rc this is also something you want to change or you'll probably want to change so you'll need to readjust the CPU values to 0 to 3 and then maybe this one is also the boost CPUs um, 0 to 3 perhaps you could get rid of that line or just write nothing to it since we don't want it to be using the additional 4 background CPUs, yeah we'll just leave that as 1 maybe if you want improve system background usage 0 to 3 this one also needs to go down to 0 to 3 and then save the file we can close notepad and you can see the verity thing is deleted already so we don't need to do anything about that next up we need to go back into the split underscore image folder and of course edit the command line to only have it compile with the maximum CPUs to use as 4 save that and close it once you've done that just double click on the repack image bat and you should be done so here's your new image that is actually patched for the AS, AOS IP 6.3 ROM or whatever ROM that you choose and basically you'll use that boot image to ensure that your phone can boot when you got the boot loop of death so that's about it guys for this video if you also want people or me to patch your boot image for you you can leave a reply on this XDA thread here alternatively you can just have a look at the third post which is what this video is about it just shows you how to patch your or a stock boot image but in this video I've shown you how to patch a custom kernel not all of them just elemental X as an example and also a custom ROM boot image which I think should mostly be the same as stock so thanks for watching guys if you have any questions feel free to leave it down below and as always happy flashing